800 feet, turn left onto Choctaw Drive. Alright, well, guten tag, my name is Dmad, and welcome to a surprise episode of Zoo Walk, or Backtrack. So, the reason it's a surprise um, entry is because I, um, well, this is kind of a last minute plan, so I think the zoo's open. I mean, it's 37 degrees, so yeah, but what Tulsa Zoo today in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah, let's see what we can see here. <laughs> Okay, so quick PSA. If you're going to a zoo and you're bringing a lot of cameras, eh, or an SD cards and batteries, and have multiple bags, make sure that you have everything accounted for before you enter the zoo. Am I speaking from experience? Possibly. So this video is actually going to be a little um, shorter in quality just because I forgot my thing, and wait a minute. Look at that. Um, anyways, it's going to be a little shorter on quality because I forgot my um, battery to my good cameras. So I only have this and my uh, regular Canon EOS T6 Rebel. So, um, so yeah, so if you get any actual good footage and maybe some hairs and maybe shaky that's because I'm taking on my photo camera it's not designed for video so we'll still make it work though so I guess enjoy the fox If you saw my last video, you'll know that one of my favorite parts of zoos are aviaries, especially walkthrough ones. So, um, Tulsa Zoo, they have a really nice, um, like, walkthrough aviary for, uh, desert birds. They got all sorts of finches and, uh, indigo birds, crested pigeons. I'm kind of reading all the signs as I'm walking, but they do have a really good display here. It's kind of like, um... I like it as kind of like a scale model. Well, not scale model, but a miniature version of the Omaha Zoo's um, Desert Dome. It's still really good. There's there's this big area where the birds, you know, they have it all to themselves. And in addition, you also have um, built-in reptile displays. Oh, look at that little bird. It's one of those uh, crested pigeons. Look, like I'm walking. But anyways, you also have some built-in, uh, but anyways, you also have some built-in reptile enclosures for, like, chuckawallas, rattlesnakes, um, iguanas, all sorts of stuff. So, I'm gonna film, take some pictures, and then we'll move on. So, this habitat has iguanas, um, common chuckawallas. Desert iguanas, that's that little guy right in front. And they also have blue spiny lizards. Now, those animals I had a little trouble finding. A little PSA to anyone looking for these animals. You always gotta look deep. It makes any sense, anyways.
Another quick PSA is that so here's the doors to the aviary. In every zoo, whenever you go into the aviary, they're gonna have airlock doors. So there's the other set. You know, there's the first one. Make sure, and I see this a lot, you know, whether people know or not, or they just have a big group, whatever, make sure that one set of doors is closed before you go to the next. They do this so that they can keep the birds um, in the habitat, all right? So, oh, look, little kind of fox. So the last time I was here, the peccary was asleep, and I'll throw a picture up on it. He was just being lazy little peccary. Now he's active. I think they're kind of an underrepresented species in zoos. So this is a part of zoos I think that's a little underrepresented. That's the North American parts. Like they got raccoons. Last time I was here they had a buck. Um, like a buck deer. They got other stuff. We're going to life in the forest now. This is one of the largest tawny frog mouth enclosures I've ever seen. I mean, unless you count the aviary, which is where the Kansas City Zoo keeps theirs at. What the? Um. Hello. It's kind of interesting when you have those walkthrough parts, you have an open aviary section. You just have the animal. It's kind of interesting. It makes me wonder what they think when they're. They walk and they see other animals in enclosures. What do they think? It's weird. There's the raccoon right there. Oh, it's a big fair hole there, aren't you, buddy? So I do this thing where I, um, I take pictures of all the little animal signs. You know, that way I know what I've got. And I'm hoping I want to do like a, a census kind of thing. But this guy, he was following me. He was kind of giving me a little tour. It's kind of cute. That and he was just guarding, making sure I get out of his, I stay out of his territory. So, Siamese f fireback pigeon is what they are. Got a lot of other cool birds in here. So, get some footage and some pictures, and we'll move on to the next area. There's an old tree shrew. It's kind of hard to get with the glare. There we go. Yeah. Oh, there's two of them in there. Oh yeah, there's the other one right in there. So, yeah, really active little guys. It's a little hard to do with the glare. I'm using my legs as a as a glare protection, but yeah. Alright, so now we're going to the life in the water, and I just want to say, this is one of the, like, best parts of the Tulsa Zoo, is that no matter what weather you come in, as long as they're open, you can have these uh, buildings, the wildlife track, and still see an abundance of animals. Got another walk through aviary here, and this is where they keep the slightly bigger birds, like the screamers, the ibis, and this is where they keep the smaller birds, like all the ducks. Except for one, there's one duck species over there, but what I find interesting, they must clip their wings or something, or trim them. Like they cut, they like trim the feathers off of uh, one of the wings so they can't fly. I'm assuming that's what they do to keep them from going back and forth so yeah oh also there's a 
said to be a gopher tortoise in here. I don't know where though, but I can make a uh, I can make a good guess. And he's got a kind of cool predator prey setup. Got all all the birds, and then you got the dragon. I don't know if he has an outdoor habitat. I think he does, but I might be thinking of Fort Worth. Alright, so that concludes the wildlife track. Takes a bit to get through, but I think it's well worth it to see the variety of animals and ecosystems that they're from, so. I don't know how much more of the zoo we can see. I mean, we got the Lost Kingdom. We'll get there in a bit. Um, and then we'll, uh, yeah. I mean, we do have a jungle building that we can go to. But as for places like Africa and, um, I don't know what else, honestly, but we'll see what we can, we'll see what we can see. Thank you.